2007, and I fell down to my knees, and I literally cried out to God as I said, what is wrong with my husband? It was the day before Christmas Eve, and uh, my family was coming over, and obviously, normally, I love having my side of the family over. It's just that on certain occasions, you know, it can also be a little challenging. And the situation was this, that my mom and dad, they had divorced a few, day, a few uh, years earlier, and both of them were coming, and then uh, my sister and my brother was there, and obviously, all of my focus was then on my side of the family, you know, I wanted them to have a good Christmas. I wanted it to be like in the old days. My husband, well, obviously, he was a little nervous about the whole situation himself. So we thought, well, I'm probably I need to help her, you know, to create this a, becoming a good experience. So we thought that the way he was going to help was that he was going to make the perfect Christmas dinner. But next morning, Big hell broke loose. Because when family is involved, great man can sometimes be very irrational. And my mother, she had killed Orient's lamb. And it wasn't really like that, that Orient had a live lamb going on, you know, walking around that he was planning to slaughter for Christmas. <laughs> but he had bought some specific lamb ribs, a Norwegian dish that was supposed to be steamed and not boiled. And he had been doing everything so perfect, you know. He had prepared everything so that, that when we woke up the next morning, you could just make the final touch of it all. And then we would get to church. And when we came back from church, it would be perfect, taste delicious, be the best meal of our life. We didn't have children back then. So we had like this lazy morning and we were up around 1030. My mom, on the other hand, she's a very early riser. So she was up around seven. So when Orion then came into the kitchen and he realized what was going on, he literally came back into the bathroom. I was coming out of the shower and he has tears in his eyes. And she sa he says, she killed the lamb. She's been boiling it from seven o'clock. Now, obviously, my mom can now hear how mad Orion is. <laughs> so she, I can hear her run to her room. And here I have my perfect little Christmas disaster. Now, obviously, if I had taken just one minute to collect myself, you know, give an Orion a hug and, you know, said, you know, honey, I appreciate your effort so much. You know, I love you. I love my family. You know, everything probably would have worked out perfect. But... I got so irritated with him that he could not control his emotions. I was like, it's just a meal. It's just a meal. Hello? Christmas meal, but anyway. And I told him how irrational I thought he was. And then I ran off to try and help and save, you know, my mom, try to, you know, fix the situation. A little later, Orion and myself were sitting in the car, and uh, I can tell you we have a full-out war going on in that car. And then we get to church. It was a very relaxing hour. You know, we realized how magical it is that God became human and that he gave his life for us so we could be redeemed and have eternal life. But I can tell you that that magic ended in church for us. Because when we got back into the car, it was like we just got alive from the trenches and we continued to shoot at each other. You know, on certain occasions like this, divorce is really not a god good option. You just want blood. <laughs> so later that evening, you know, I... I'm laying there on my knees. It wasn't the perfect Christmas, I can tell you that. I'm laying there on my knees, and I'm telling God how we have to fix my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my most of all, my irrational husband. If not, I'm going to just, I need to just move to a different planet, you know, to get some peace and quiet. And suddenly, you know, I just feel that the answer from God comes like a whisper. 
where I suddenly feel that he says, well, you know, I, there is another planet, and I can take you there. It's called your attitude. Ah, hurts. Now, I wish I would have gotten that answer as soon as I told you now. Then I could have changed around, and, you know, it could have been instead of two weeks of horror, it could have been just two minutes. But to realize, you know, that I was in charge. I was in charge the whole situation. I could have controlled that. I could have come from a, an angle of love, understanding. And suddenly, you know, we could have laughed about the whole scenario. He would have laughed about the whole scenario. And then everything would have been a lot better. It was my attitude. I can tell you that I've learned my lesson over the years because I do have sometimes a little bit of a temper. And I've learned, you know, that I'm not going to come from a standpoint of emotions when it comes to certain situations like that. I have to control my emotions through my logic. And I actually am a lot better today, <laughs> I can tell you that. I still have my moments. But I've also learned, you know, that the same counts for our business. Because if you run your business through your emotions all the time, that can leave you in a trap. Suddenly, you're left with decreasing something that you want to increase. So it's an extraordinary important thing to be aware of that you are in charge of your attitude. You're in charge of it in the mornings, during the day, during the evenings, even at Christmas. You know, over the years, you know, I watched my incredible husband develop. Not just in business, but also as my husband, as a friend, as a son-in-law. And I have watched him, you know, literally being in a state where he's not able to perform. And suddenly, five minutes later, he does his thing. I've watched him backstage without any notes on the paper, being hit with negativity or different issues that he has to handle. Then he changes around his attitude. He walks on stage and he delivers a rock star speech. For those of you that wonder, he still impresses me, and I'm still madly in love with him. <laughs> He's my superstar. But you know, I watched him develop so much over these years. And the point of the matter is this. We all will have situations in our life where we feel set back. It's inevitable. It's always going to be there at certain points. The big question is how fast are you going to make your comeback? Because this can easily be a five-minute process, a five-year process, or a 50-year process where you never allow that seed of greatness to sprout that you have on your inside. It never blooms. It can also be a, just a five-minute process to go from zero to hero. You can do like uh, what I do. I find a small room, usually called the bathroom, with a mirror, and I look myself in, in the eyes, in that mirror, and I talk myself into becoming a better version of myself, lifting the best out of me. Because I do know, yes, I'm crazy, yes. But I do know that the number one key to change around my attitude is to change my self-talk. How are you speaking to yourself? What are you saying to yourself when nobody is around? And if you're thinking now, no, I'm not speaking to myself. Yes, you just spoke to yourself. For many years, you know, I was um, writing down 10 things. Every evening before I went to bed, I was writing down 10 things of different things that I was grateful for. Why? Because 
I was just stuck in a situation where I felt that I was not growing the way I wanted to grow. And when you're not growing as fast as you want to, then it's so easy to be caught up in that instead of actually what are you grateful for. And it's through knowing what you're grateful for, you can move on. Every evening before I put my son to sleep, we have this kind of ritual. First, we stand on our head in the bed. <laughs> he does it first, and then I do it. <laughs> it's actually a little fun thing, you know. Uh, here, uh, he, and he's actually kind, kind of proud of his mama, you know. He thinks I'm quite good at it. Here the other day, uh, Orion came in. I was standing on my head in the, in the bed, and uh, Gabriel is very sweet. He's like, you're so good. <laughs> I think you did it best this, this time, mommy. And Orion is like, well, you're doing it for the recognition, huh? <laughs> I like, you know, when my son is bragging about me. So after standing on our head, I tell him a little fairy tale, and it's usually involving some superheroes, and it has to be different every evening, so I really have to work on my creative side. And then you understand this is not a two-minute process. It's more like 20 minutes, right? So after that, and uh, no, before praying and singing, you know, we talk about what are we grateful for that day. I start, he continues. Why? Because I truly do believe that you can have everything in the world, but if you're not grateful for what you have, that's not going to give you happiness. And obviously, my son, our children, they're growing up in a different luxury, I would say, than Orin and myself grew up in. So we have to be very aware of that as we're raising our kids, teaching them to be actually grateful. And I do believe this, that having an increased attitude towards life is first and foremost about this. It's counting what you have and getting ready to grow that. If you have a lot, you count that. If you have little, you count that. But you count what you have, and then you grow that. 